sustainable development goals. Yes? Uh, so these are uh, 17 goals defined by the United Nations in 2015. And uh, so you have several important goals such as uh, eliminating poverty, fighting hunger, etc. And there is one specific goal related to cities. So it's uh, the, the goal 11, which says precisely, make cities inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Um, and of course, uh, the United Nations uh, raised a few uh, big issues related to cities. The fact that uh, today half of the world population is living in cities, and in, two in 2030 it should be six, uh, 60 percent. 2050, about uh, 70 percent of the world population living in cities. Um, and uh, yes, uh, 828 million people living in slums today. Um, you have also very big issues related to energy consumption and carbon emissions. So cities account for uh, 60 to 80% uh, of energy consumption and 75% uh, of carbon emissions worldwide. Although they only occupy just today 3% of the earth uh, land. And of course, uh, you can imagine the pressure that uh, cities exert on, uh, you know, water, for example, and uh, uh, waste and uh, all the different resources and, of course, uh, pollution, the, the different externalities of the cities, like pollution, traffic jam, in, uh, for example, in the, in the developing world, uh, especially. So to explore these, uh, these issues, of course, of mass cities and... Uh, as it is organized, you know, uh, co-organized by the SNO Center and the Career Department, we will also be, f uh, f we will also focus on uh, new skills, uh, you know, uh, required by companies that are uh, tackling these challenges. So, uh, the idea is for you to have a better idea about what uh, companies. Uh, uh, you have uh, here a few representatives from uh, some companies. So. What are they expecting from uh, new uh, managers, from their uh, managers and leaders? What specific skills? So it will be, of course, very much also focused on, on this. Uh, so we'll have a, a total of one hour and a half to deal with these two issues, I would say. First, uh, um, how do these companies, you know, uh, tackle this uh, question of uh, uh, smart cities. How do, do they? Um, uh, how do, uh, do uh, urban challenges impact their business? And then second uh, the, the, the second question will be more on uh, you know um, wh what is the impact on uh, skills and new jobs uh, and um, you know uh, new skills in existing jobs and maybe new jobs also as well. Uh, and so to explore this question, we have uh, great speakers. We are very honored uh, to, to have them with us uh, this afternoon, uh, despite uh, the strike. Um, so we have uh, Thibaut uh, Benin-Kelil, consultant and director at uh, GreenFlex. Do you know? Uh, oh, sorry, we'll explain what is GreenFlex. Okay. Um, a consulting company. No, I think you, you'll do it better. <laughs> okay, um, and we have uh, several alumni uh, actually working at Greenflex, so it's, um, you know, they're hiring quite a few HEC. <laughs> well, they have been hiring at least uh, for the, la uh, the last years. Then we have also Pierre Brunet uh, from Veolia, so you are uh, Vice President of Smart Cities at Veolia. Thank you very much. And uh, I have to add that Veolia is one of our uh, partner, uh, you know, SNO partner. Um, they are very much involved in our uh, movement for social and business impact. I do some advertising at the same time. So, um, and uh, we are very happy to uh, welcome um, Franz Besnik. That's that's it. Yeah. Uh, so you are head of R and D sustainability at Procter and Gamble, and you come from uh, Bruxelles. And Olivia Conil Lacoste, uh, who is uh, an HSC alumna uh, in the former SASI Master, so uh, Master Development Durable at that time, and VP Sustainability at Bouygues Immobilier. Nice to see you uh, again, <laughs> Olivia. 
Um, so uh, yes, I come back to my uh, first. Uh, the first question is uh, really um, on how urban challenges impact your business, um, and how, of course, uh, what what what, uh, what is the role of technologies um, in the, in your business today? How does it impact your business in in general? Uh, related, of course, to, to smart cities. Uh, is it also a new source of business for probably for consultants like like you, uh, Thibault? Yes, uh, we work with our technology, but I do not get my money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Thibault Benkiri from Greenflex. Uh, you probably know PNG, Veolia, and uh, Bouygues Immobilier. You probably don't know Greenflex. Greenflex, uh, well, it's uh, 250 person environmental consultancy uh, working on sustainable uh, development issues. So we've been working for on smart cities for a long time, and uh, we are not only a consultancy, but we also develop uh, IT solutions for our customers. So smart cities are a kind of project where it definitely makes sense to link uh, traditional consulting and uh, and IT solutions. Well. Uh, of course, smart cities impact us uh, and give us some new opportunities to of new missions for for public sector and companies. Uh, smart city is a complex uh, is a complex issue. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, when I see an intern or a consultant candidate in front of me, I like asking the question. What is a smart city according to you? Because the question is quite difficult and there can be some really different answers to this question. Because when people talk about smart cities, not only sustainable, connected, uh, inclusive or resilient, it's a mix of all this which is very, very important. Of course, it's sustainable and it has to work on every environmental issue, including biodiversity, energy, carbon, health, and uh, in, a, in a district, in a city level. Um, it has to be intelligent and connected because smart city is based on multiple data you can collect from, uh, from the people that live there, the people that move there, that work there. Uh, and you have to do something very intelligent and useful with this data. Um, it has to be inclusive, as you, as you said, because uh, the smart city is not something for only a few geeks, if you know what I mean. Uh, it has to become accessible to every one of us, even your grandma. Uh, she, must, she can be prone to, to be in a smart city. Uh, and of course it has to be resilient and to be ready to, to adapt new technology. Uh, people have been doing smart cities now for 10, 15 years and it's a nonsense to erase the technology uh, with another one and uh, well we can we need to have something to to add not to delete what has been done previously so dealing with small cities really deals with all uh, all these issues and of course it's it has become some complex projects for us uh, for example, we've been working with, uh, with ICAD uh, and the Caisse des Depots on this issue a lot. We've been working on the Porte de Paris. Uh, Can you explain what is ICAD for us? Yeah, ICAD, ICAD is, a, is an important uh, real estate planner in France. Uh, working with the Caisse des Depots and uh, it administrates a few uh, a few, uh, a lot of districts in France, including the one my colleague is working in, uh, and um, and we've been defining what a, what is a smart city for for ICAD, and uh, a smart city can be seen as a combination of different technological, uh, well, uh, different technologies. Uh, and it does. It cannot be that uh, the smart cities has to link uh, precisely to to functionalities and to real needs of people that live there and that move there. Um, it's not 
it's not only a laboratory of, of technologies. Uh, you have to, to get interest in what uh, people are really doing in this area and how to fulfill their, their needs. It's, uh, it's really important. Um, so when you said that it, you have to, to, to list all the needs of the inhab inhabitants of, of the neighborhoods and um, think um, how you can improve the situation of mobility, of housing, of creating social link uh, between, uh, between inhabitants. Uh, and that's how we deal uh, with this approach um, with ICAT. Uh, it's not easy to start this subject for, 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 a, for our clients. Uh, sometimes they start, yes, we have an eco-district there, and they start, for example, with the environmental part of the smart city, uh, which aims at having a good environmental performance uh, within buildings, uh, with monitoring, with new materials, with solar panels and other technologies. Um, uh, so it's, it starts with uh, eco-districts and then you add some new uh, stuff like services for mobility, for example, and how you can, um, how you can create uh, real links, for example, uh, in in gardens or if for example I don't know if you know but in Aubervilliers you have some eco pasture with sheep for example which is quite funny to see in cities uh, dozens of sheep uh, in the streets uh, at uh, two two hundred meters uh, from from Paris. Uh, this is quite surprising to see that. Sorry, but sorry, the ICAD. What, what do they precisely ask you uh, to to to, 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 do, define, to, to define the whole? Uh, yeah, to define the whole strategy the whole and strategy. To, to work on mobility issues, to work on housing issues, to work on uh, real estate issues for one specific then, area, and yeah. then uh, mapping all the services you can have in the cities and uh, for these services which technology you need to to have to, to fulfill this need. So this smart cities start with people and not with technologies, yeah, that's yeah, it? it yeah, it starts okay. with people and functionalities and then when you really thought about that, you, you deal with technology. That's our approach and that's the approach of, uh, of ICAT, yeah. Are there uh, some companies that do, do not start with people first and just start with uh, technologies? Or is well, some t some companies I think are more like uh, an incubator of technology, but oh sometimes yeah. uh, you can. It's a qu it's a question of governance uh, uh, because you can have multiple technologies developing and it become quite uh, chaotic, like like development, and. Uh, for example, you, ta you take mobility. Um, you have uh, in uh, Paris and Ile-de-France uh, the will to, to have intelligent mobility and to have some new uh, apps to, to develop that. And, uh, well, it's a tr strike today. Uh, but uh, the RATP has developed some tools to improve mobility in the region, in some cities. Uh, but then you had other companies, other, t other technology, more uh, intelligent. Uh, everyone is using now some applications like uh, Waze or like CityMapper, for example. And then it changes something because it, uh, it comes from a planified uh, organization and it goes into technology innovation with these new apps which are more relevant and s uh, and then people start organizing themselves for mobility without re, um, without re, uh, without using a transport operator and they start uh, uh, using uh, uber for example so this uh, this is an example about uh, about mobility, but uh, governance is also yeah. very important. How do you deal with mobility issues? The RTP, other apps, or uh, or people 
creating links between themselves, for example, with carpooling and stuff mm. like that. So could, could you give us uh, maybe a precise example of a mission that you did with the uh, ICAD uh, and the results of, of, of this mission uh, regarding, you know, the main uh, characteristics of the, uh, the strategy uh, that emerged from your well, work? Well, ICAD, it's, it's a very... An an another, you know, uh, operator, it can mm. be. Well, we've been working for three years now with ICAD. It's adding some new services, and as I told you, it's going from an eco district to to uh, more um, ambitious goals, and it's quite a progressive uh, method to get to to what we can call a, a start city, yeah, the smart so city. So you help also design the, the governance. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, so exactly, exactly. And we, for example, for for um, energy issues, for, uh, we um, today we have in France a very centralized approach for 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 energy. We try to see in a dec in an eco, eco district what can we do uh, interesting uh, for for energy for um, and. You can uh, use some um, some housing for for solar panels, and you can have some demand response. You can everyone talks about energy storage, and uh, it's also our job to to tell ICAD, well, you have these different technologies. Uh, today, this technology is uh, achievable. This this one is not. It's for uh, in five years, for example. Uh, trying to to classify what we can do now and what we can do in the future, which, you, which is quite interesting. Do you advise some uh, mayors, for example, sometimes? Mm, no, not no. directly, not me personally, okay. but some colleagues, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, do you want to add some? Um, Maybe later. Yes, no, <laughs> later, yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, Pierre, uh, yes, Pierre Brunet. Um, so at Veolia, what does it mean, uh, you know, working on smart cities? Very concretely, yes. If you can give us also examples yes. of what you what you do with uh, probably no. some uh, yeah. Myers and uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Thibault, also for your uh, explanation. I think I'd, I'd like to echo some of your comments with some uh, concrete uh, examples of what uh, Veolia has done with cities. So. In a few words, Veolia, we have one mission, uh, resourcing the world. We have uh, two categories of clients, municipalities, 50% of our turnover, industry and, and uh, commercial businesses, the other 50%. And we have three business lines, water, waste, and energy. So being a, a provider of, uh, of municipal services, of course, we've been directly impacted by these uh, smart city uh, initiatives. And, and our experience that I, I'd like to share has, has gone through uh, three different phases. The first phase, um, you know, like five years ago, uh, we, we realized that uh, smart initiatives, smart, being smart was uh, really becoming a, a common expectation from, uh, from cities. And so we decided to leverage technology. So we did start uh, with technology uh, at that time to respond to this, uh, these expectations from municipalities as a way also to differentiate uh, uh, from, from competitors to demonstrate you know, the fact that we could be uh, at the forefront of, uh, of new, uh, new solutions. So really uh, smart solutions uh, technology, putting sensors, so we, uh, the example uh, I would like to share is uh, with the city of Lyon uh, for water services, five years ago we put in place a lot of sensors and then a platform to analyze data coming from these sensors in order to be more transparent with the municipality, share in real time what's going on in the city, to be more resilient, being able to, uh, to react faster in case of, of crisis. So really a solution targeted at differentiating ourselves so from a business development point of view. That was the first Sorry, part. it was for water? Or for it was for water, yeah. Okay. I, I, I'll use uh, a few examples from for, for water, but you know, they could be uh, applicable for, for other topics. Uh, second phase, uh, 
we realized that it was nice, uh, you know, in the business development uh, point of view. Uh, the city uh, liked this uh, this approach very much, but we questioned the impact that it had on 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 the services we provide, and so we turned it upside down, and we we looked at it from from uh, really from the field, from operations. How can I use data in a different way to manage my services, provide better quality services? How can I cross data from different sources? So looking at, you know, at it from a very practical way and then building the solutions, defining the technology to serve these, these objectives. So in a way what you have described, starting from use cases as we call them or you know objectives of, uh, of in terms of services and and then going to uh, technology solutions so that's the second phase still very much inward looking you know managing services the third phase we then turn to uh, our clients w looking at their perspective what do they really want to 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 focus on from you know from a city from a mayor point of view what is important and of course you know it comes to to people uh, to inhabitants citizens what do we offer citizens a smart city has to to have uh, inhabitants at, at its core it's not smart for you know the sake of being smart no digital it's smart big for a purpose, and, and, and one of the main purposes is, is to be more inclusive. So we've developed uh, very practically a few uh, mobile apps uh, to engage citizens in, in public services. The very well-known uh, one, uh, as an example, as an illustration, you see something going wrong in the city, in the street, you take a picture, send it to, to the city, it's uh, geo-localized, you can send, uh, put a comment. So it's a way to, for you to contribute to making uh, the city a, a better place to live in, and it's a way for the city to, to, to react faster. Another application, I think, uh, that the latest we've, we've, uh, we've produced is uh, it's called Fastosh, which means, well, easy uh, in, in French. It's an app that is uh, targeting um, citizens that have uh, difficulties with their budget, uh, you know, to to uh, reach uh, to meet have uh, ends meet at the end of the month. So it's a, a simple app with a social uh, social reach to help citizens to manage their budget. So calculating, okay, what are the bills you regularly have? which, w what do you have to take into account and how much do you have daily available that you can spend? Very simple, but a practical app connected to our uh, services, but not only. And that's, that's leading to my uh, uh, second, second point. Uh, if we look at clients, looking at the city, we've developed, uh, th this time not, not for citizens, but for mayors, what we call a city dashboard. And it's a you know sim simple dashboard that gives uh, city officials a way to understand what's going on in the city, with technical indicators, but also listening to uh, to uh, social media, because there's a lot that's going on that's being said about the city uh, in social media, and and being able to to uh, identify these uh, these signals is is uh, is important. And this, this board, of course, with this dashboard for the city, we've started with uh, information from our businesses, the easy way. But also looking at the city point of view, what is important for them? Safety, transportation, so not directly connected to our businesses. And so the other point uh, I, I'm trying to make here is that clearly providing uh, smart city solutions means working wi with other partners working with you know large groups with startups uh, with an ecosystem to be able to provide cities with the, the the full range of solutions that they expect no one has you know the the full answer 
Uh, it's, it's such a complex, as you said, uh, a topic that, uh, that it's really about being able to create partnerships uh, to, to propose uh, solutions. And I don't know, perhaps I should stop here, or, 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 or perhaps the last, so the last dimension is still, you know, starting from the field, uh, again, with sensors, how do, how do we, you know, use technology, how do, do we use real-time information to better uh, uh, preserve resources? So, for example, in Lyon, we deploy the sensors to detect leakage, and this is helping us to, to reduce uh, significantly uh, the, the, the leakage in the city. Uh, so, and, and, and these, you know, similar uh, sensor, other sensors can be used uh, for, for ob other objectives, but always starting with, okay, wha what is the purpose? And, and, uh, and, and perhaps la one last word to uh, talking about sensors. We've created uh, an internal startup to manage this, uh, this topic of, uh, of, uh, of sensors in the city. And in a similar way, we've created a, a few internal startups so you know, like corporate uh, internal corporate venture, to be more agile. We've realized that you know being a large group has uh, benefits, but if you want to develop fast on these uh, on these new topics, you need to be very agile. And so we've created these small entities to let them grow, partner, look at disruptive ideas, in a way that uh, perhaps would have been more difficult if they were just you know corporate departments. So this is something we've, uh, we've initiated. We've, we've got uh, what we call Nova Veolia, uh, re grouping uh, seven different uh, startups uh, focusing on, on uh, various aspects of, of smart cities in order to be, uh, to be more, more reactive and more, uh, more agile in, uh, in our approach to, uh, to this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. So what I understand from what you say is that uh, technologies are in a way serving uh, environmental issues, but also social issues. Um, and they're, they're associated with a sort of uh, ecosystemic innovation, working with lots of uh, different actors. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Olivia, um, it's your turn. So I think you have prepared a few slides and, uh, and we have a special translator, <laughs> Sophie. Uh, so, Olivia, again, is uh, VP Sustainability at uh, Bouygues Immobilier. So, you have uh, started quite recently, I think. Yes, six months ago. Six months ago. And so, wha what's, uh, what does it mean, uh, smart cities for Bouygues Immobilier? So, can you give us, again, precise examples of, uh, I don't know, buildings, okay, but also areas? Um, yes, what, what does it mean for you? Hello to everyone. So yes, I'm, uh, I'm at Boogie Immobilier since six months. Like I'm going to try to describe you what we do and uh, in the smarter way. And uh, I'll, be, I'll do it half in English and then a bit in French. And this is my, my translator with me. So Boogie Immobilier built residential commercial property, but also since uh, 2011, uh, we, we work with uh, on a urban, urban scale, uh, neighbor, sustainable neighborhoods. And uh, we address all the problematics that Greenflex uh, talked about uh, on environment, social, societal, at this scale. Um, uh, in, in the same time, uh, we have an innovation department that work on proof of concept uh, on a lot of uh, subjects and address also the smart cities. I'm, I'm going to, to tell you how. I want to, to show you two examples of uh, what can be smart at the scale of, of a building and at the scale of a town. So for example, this is Swayze. Swayze is a program, it's an office building that uh, will, be, will be built in 2021. And um, the person that works on it uh, wants it to be very smart in four ways. Uh, he wants it to be very comfortable uh, for for the for the, the, the people that uh, work in, but he wants it to that he can transform itself 
for the different purpose uh, on real time. You don't do it uh, on measure for one client, you do it for it to evol evolve in time and it change, uh, I don't know, the meeting rooms can change place, it can change all the time. Um, uh, it's very secured, it has cyber security and you can, with the face of people, know who gets in. You can rent some part of the building to people that don't work in the company uh, when the, the place are free. But uh, the building knows it in real time, I don't know if I, in a given time. So you can say, okay, there is a room free, there is parking lot free, there is a, you can go to the restaurant, it's free. And so it's in total connection with the neighborhood uh, that gets in. Uh, and the fourth, um, the fourth part was uh, that, of course, it is a, uh, positive in energy and uh, it can adapt to uh, how many people are inside and uh, regulate uh, ventilation, uh, energy, uh, uh, warmth uh, and things like that. So uh, that's the next step of what we do already because already we do green offices that are positive energy offices but this is the next step. The next next step will be to have a building that can transform itself also in for example uh, uh, within years in a uh, logement, in uh, apartments, if we need it. Today it's really hard to do that because it's different norms, it's, div it's, it's hard to do, so this is a challenge for us to have uh, this type of building that can transform themselves and to be not obsolescent at all. And this is a smart, sustainable city. But you have... Is that okay? You, you may have also... You hear me? Yeah. Yes, some uh, what we call uh, functional um, diversity uh, buildings that uh, offer both, you know. Uh yes, we also work at to have hybrid uh, building that can have both, of course, uh, for have a mixed city, uh, generational, social, and functional mixed city. This is very important. That's just an example. Uh, I don't know. Oops. I don't know if it's uh, that is inside Swayze. You can see. And that is, for example, the living square. It's uh, 1,700 uh, meters, and this, this is shared by everybody, and you work in a new way in that type of building. So that is just an example. I, I like this example, and uh, I wanted to, to share it with you. Um, uh, at the scale of a neighborhood, uh, we, we work on, so on the energy... Uh, um, I mean, we, 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 we try to do some smart grids in different neighborhoods. Uh, EC grid, for example, at EC Les Moulineaux, and this is very technological, and the, this is really based on data, so it, it, it need, like, we need a lot of new competence to do that. And uh, we have also a lot of, uh, um, how to say that, uh, like um, the, 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 the law, the rules stop us also on this kind of experience, so we have to, uh, we have to negotiate to try to do some new experimentation and uh, uh, of a decentralized uh, network of energy uh, between producer and consumers in the same neighborhood. But the smart uh, grid can can address other types of uh, of um, of uh, subjects like environment, mobility, communication, other service. So the last example I wanted to show you is this example, it's, um, uh, this is in Lyon. This is a demonstrator of a sustainable city. Uh, we're not alone on this one. It's a lot of partner and uh, we work with, uh, uh, we, we work with a lot of partner. I can show you just here. So there is a lot of people working for this. There is, 14 signature and 70 companies. There are some startups. There are some uh, other companies. There are some. Uh, there, there is a WWF also. There is a lot, and we try uh, uh, new types of services for the users. Uh, we try, of course, the smart grid. Uh, we try to develop a soft mobility. Uh, well, you can see all the partner here. And to do a smart city, you need all those competences. You can't do, do that on yourself. So, uh, so yes, we, we, we work on health also in this, uh, in this town. We work uh, on uh, social media. We develop some uh, application for people to, to get in touch, not 
just the inhabitant, inhabitant but also the workers. Uh, we, we work on the electric uh, shuttle bus, uh, a lot of things like this. So that type of things we, we do at Big Immobilier. Uh, and and uh, each time we have a, um, uh, contest. a contest of to, 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 to win uh, in a town, we have to ask ourselves the question, what would be uh, intelligent to put in that contest context of the of this town we have to uh, to study what are the habits of the inhabitants what what are the the real needs because you can't do a town that doesn't correspond to the needs of their inhabitants so this is also uh, very important in the way we work uh, we we won't do the same smart city uh, everywhere in france you do different smart cities uh, voilà <laughs> Okay. Uh, could we say that you, uh, in a way, um, try to promote the third industrial revolution? That uh, do you know about this? You know, from uh, Jeremy Rifkin. Uh, this Functionality. No. Mean, or third industrial revolution. Digital. It's about, it's about decentralization. You know, having uh, autonomous uh, areas, uh, sharing their energy, etc. Yes, the smart grid is exactly this. Huh? It's uh, sharing energy uh, between consumer and producers, and we try to promote that. But there is a lot of technological challenge and uh, and uh, uh, juridic challenge too. Yeah. Okay. So you need to do uh, a lot of lobbying. Yes, lobbying. of course. Yeah, of yes, course. Yes. Thank you very much, Olivia. Uh, so, Hans, it's your turn. <laughs> so, what does it mean, smart cities, for Procter and Gamble? Uh, just yes, explain us. We're very curious. Yeah, I guess that's you guys are curious because when I was preparing for that, the first question I had is why the hell is PNG coming to this smart city forum? Yeah. And, uh, and I, I thought that was intriguing enough for me to actually come uh, and tell you about smart city. So first, smart city is not an end in mind, but smart city is an amazing playground for innovation. And uh, I'd like to take you back to a personal story because that's how it started in me, and uh, it's how it inspired or work into the smart city. It's, um, it's August 2, 2014, <clears throat> and I enjoy a very shiny, sunny weather. It's summertime, and I'm on the seaside. There's lots of sun, there's lots of water, there's lots of fun, and I'm having a blast of my time. Except at the point in time where I open up the radio, and the radio says, today, it's Earth Overshoot Day. And I didn't know what, what Earth Overshoot Day was until I actually looked up uh, at the Google and found out that Earth Overshoot Day, it's the day where humanity actually is starting to consume more than when the Earth planet is producing. So it's the day where you stop selling products? Or well, literally, <laughs> that's, where you should st that's exactly where you should stop selling anything. Mm -hmm. But yet, we still sell things. I was still at the beach, I was still having a lot of fun, I was still having, being able to consume. I could actually buy as many ice creams as I could. And in fact, on the very Sunday, just an hour after, I actually get myself, and I switched off the radio, I was pissed off with that news, I didn't like that news. And half an hour you know, later, I got very annoyed by my smartphone. Guess why? My smartphone was showing that there's only 20% less of, left of battery. And that put me in a frantic need of the facility to power it up again. Half an hour before, I could hear that the planet was running out. I wouldn't care, I wouldn't care less. But my smartphone running out of battery, I mean, only left 20%, would put me in a, in a frantic need of nervosity and, uh, and, and that sort of frantic need to recharge this thing. Why? Having this smartphone, this smart phone, was giving me the answer. This is irresistible. Global warming is not irresistible. The first thing I want to do when I hear about global warming is shut down the radio, put my head in the sound and forget about that. But when my smartphone runs out of battery, I want to power it up like there's no tomorrow. How we actually can create a craving for powering back up the planet as much as we crave for our smartphone to be powered up. That's basically the mission. I said to myself, it's schizophrenic at times. Um, I call that, I resume that in three words um, for PNG, it's make, Sustainable, irresistible. Because if we make sustainable irresistible, suddenly you don't sell sustainable, you don't need to push sustainable, you make it irresistible. You and I 
And every one of us will actually rush to these sustainable solutions like there's no tomorrow because it's simply irresistible. And by the way, I don't even need to say it's, it's sustainable. I just need to make it irresistible. So that's the job at PNG. The program I've created is called Home of the Future. And Home of the Future is in a smart city. So now I come to your question. Why? Because the stats you've just uh, listed at the very beginning of this conference were absolutely staggeringly horrible. Did you hear that? The cities only occupy 3% of the land of the planet. They are responsible for more than two-thirds of the greenhouse gas altogether. 70% of the population are moving to cities. In fact, every single week of this year, so by tomorrow, when we close the week, at least Friday to Friday, there will be 1.5 more million people that have actually moved to cities over that week, that one week. Multiply by 52 weeks, and you have a move, you know, the country of France building up every year into the world. That's how fast it is. It's not like 2050 or 70 percent sounds like far off. No, actually, it's actually happening. 1.5 million people this week would have moved to cities by the end of the year of the country of France. So a smart a home of the future has got to be in a smart city because, um, because cities are the, where the problem happens for the most to follow the footprint. Um, so why, how PN, so what, what do we do with PNG? <clears throat> well, we do innovation. We do this type of innovation, so we're very proud about the pods. This is probably, and I would always obviously say that as PNG, this is a, probably one of the most breakthrough innovation we've put together for decades on laundry. So that's cool, and we're proud, and this is actually the most compacted form of laundry that exists on this planet. So it's half of what a powder is, it's 30% less than a liquid bottle is. So we've got less packaging, less products to put, less transportation. But guess what? Over the entirety of our products, this formula accounts for 5% of the footprint. This package corresponds for 5% of the footprint. The transportation of this package to the consumer homes and the shops corresponds, accounts for 5% of the footprint. And disposing of that package, recycling it back, accounts for 5% of the footprint. So there's a big bar left at 80%. And what it is, it's actually the home usage. It's the washing machine, it's the hot water. That's the problem. That's why we need to actually make huge, huge progress. The fact that you're shampooing with hot water, the fact that I shampoo with hot water, the fact that I hand soap with hot water, the fact that I actually wash clothes with uh, hot water, all of that is creating most of the footprint impact. So that's why PNG <laughs> cares about solving that problem, which is a home problem in cities, which is two thirds of the problem of the planet. So that's the short answer of why is PNG <laughs> dealing with smart cities because you know, smart is certainly part of the irresistibility. It's not all, but it's, it's a big one. So that, ho ho you know, hopefully sensitize you with how much it matters to us. Um, now, once you've actually observed um, that and appreciated that uh, there's a huge 80% footprint impact that you're having, uh, just like the fact that you use hot water, um, then what do we do about that? Um, the other big problem also in the homes is waste, and, but that's actually pretty visible. People um, actually see the waste. Uh, people don't see necessarily how much hot water, so waste is a very visible issue. It's only a little easier at times because it's not invisible, but the hot water is totally invisible. You don't know um, how much hot water you're using for this. So talking about waste and talk about that smart city, um, two years ago, with um, we've actually brainstormed probably one of the, the craziest idea uh, I could ever think of to actually being able to recycle soiled diapers. This is a clean one. Obviously, I didn't bring soiled diapers with me. But how about we're going to actually take the challenge of recycling that waste, which is extremely visible to consumer. Not only is it visible, but it's also um, odorant. How are we going to actually take the challenge to recycle soil diapers? Get soil diapers back into parts of it will be fertilizers, the other part will be plastics that gets back into and upcycled to furnitures or the cellulosic material. How are we going to actually go do that? 
so that now we close the loop on, on, on the diapers. And um, that's a crazy idea that uh, emerged two years ago. It was kind of a big bet. Um, we actually are making a lot of progress. Um, we are um, starting, believe it or not, two years down the road, a pilot in Amsterdam next year. And um, uh, one of our uh, venture companies basically cracked the process of recycling soil diapers. This uh, one is recycled? That's no. not, no, that's, oh. that's a new one. Okay, so yeah. the process is running. Mm -hmm. It's actually demonstrating. Um, we now are putting it in full scale in a city. And that's, uh, that's the other link to back to your question about smart city. Why smart city? Why PNG? Well, when you actually decide to go after what I call closing the loop, creating a circular, uh, circularity in solutions, break the model of just, you know, make, use and dispose and who cares where it goes. But when you're actually going to close the loop and really um, create that home of the future where you close the loop, you, you look for circular solutions, we have to go and work in cities. Um, suddenly, when you create a soil diapers, when you want to actually recycle soil diapers, you have to create a stream, a recycling streams for it. It doesn't exist. So Today, you just... To work with exactly. my neighbor? Well, we, we have some partnerships right now with other neighbors, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm... Okay, I'm you can partner at the end. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That's one of my wins coming here as well as meet with you and uh, we, we also with, uh, with the partners. But when you actually decide to recycle diapers, you, you, it's not, you, you cannot decide that on your own. Say, oh, wait, let's recycle diapers. No. Suddenly, you have to create a special streams um, called soil diaper streams. It doesn't exist today. It's just thrown out in, a, in, a, in, a, in one garbage. Suddenly, into a different collection system. Suddenly, into a, a, you know, a municipality <laughs> you know, challenge uh, where you basically create a whole supply chain of something that didn't exist. And so that's, that automatically get, gets us into um, a smart city and how we're going to smarten this whole thing. Um, how are we going to reinvent the business model? Um, you know, how are we going to actually incite the consumers to really do that? How are we going to make it easy for, for, for him and her um, so that it's actually a, a, a pleasurable, I call that an irresistible experience that these diapers get uh, recycled back. Um, but that's not, we, we cannot be on our own. We have to have partners, as you say, and we have to work with municipalities uh, big time uh, to change those models. So. Although the home of the future as a closing, um, there's lots to be done. Uh, we started, I started this program about a year ago. Um, we brainstormed the specific diapers idea a couple of years ago, but now we really want to, under that roof of the home of the future, think about the future of laundering, the future of closing the loop on, of shamp on shampooing, closing the loop on hand soaping, closing the loop on washing dishes. What does it all mean? And how are we going to do that? And so the future is ours. Thank you very much, Franz. Uh, so it's time to, to come uh, to, to the, the, the issue, the, the skills issue, and the, the new jobs that emerge from all these, uh, you know, smart cities. Uh, so, what? How do you see, um, you know, Thibault, the, What are the uh, yes new new skills that you ask your consultants, for example, to to, to have in? Uh, you know, classical job of consultant or mm. new, well. even, new, even, uh, new jobs that emerge? A consultant cannot do everything, that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, well, it can trigger some interesting ideas. Uh, we've talked about diapers. I didn't know we were going to talk about diapers when I came here. I was still, of, co of course, I was wondering what PAG was doing here. Of but we could ha I could have talked about fruit and vegetable and sort channels in, in cities. We've been working on the carbon footprint of um, some, some key players of the DMS in, in France uh, are very interested in, the, in, uh, in these issues. And so, yes, the, the key issue is we have to create some new feeds and we have to, to invent some, some new, new business models. Um, uh, I'm a consultant and I can see we have some needs of a lot of uh, different um, uh, things to, to make a real smart cities. Uh, we need to analyze some data, of course. And, uh, well, everyone is talking about uh, big data. I don't want to be linked in right now, but uh, it's uh, quite an important issue to get to analyze this data. And uh, we have sensors everywhere. Uh, either sensors are the pro uh, the um, uh, are, um, uh, from Veolia, from cities, from EDF, from other companies. 
uh, we have sensors, we have data to, to cross to, uh, together to, to make uh, energy optimization, uh, waste stream optimizations. Uh, so this is, the first, uh, this is the first requirement to analyze this data. Uh, we also have to, 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 we have a lot, here you have a lot of large companies. You could have had a panel with startups or even individuals. Uh, that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, we, ha uh, initiatives are really mushrooming today. And of course we're gonna have some new business models. Uh, and every city, as you said, is quite unique. And um, the business models are not the same and we need to analyze that and to, in incubator structures, we need to compare that and to make the right decisions. Either it's a public actor or a big company that wants to integrate uh, new initiatives. So we need to have, you're gonna need to, to analyze some business plans. It's gonna be very important and uh, to see what's the real impact gonna be on uh, CO2 emission, on health issues, and of course, on financial KPI. Um, so, this is quite difficult, but it has to be done. Um, of course, you have new organization issues in, in cities uh, for individuals and for companies. What's going to be their source of information? How are, gon are, are they going to be rewarded for uh, going into a smart city plan, for example, for giving the data? You also have a lot of issues regarding uh, confidential uh, uh, privacy and uh, privacy of this data. Um, so you have a lot of organization technical analysis uh, of, uh, of data, new way to build cities. Uh, technical requirement, new business model, and uh, of course make uh, actors change their way uh, to to sell energy, to sell uh, vegetables, to sell diapers, and to to monitor all these these aspects. So you have a lot of new jobs coming. That's for sure. Thank you very much, Thibault. Pierre. Yes, some similar comments. I, I guess. Uh, Obviously, uh, skills that are absolutely needed are, uh, you know, innovation. That's 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 key. Uh, it's changing so fast. Uh, so having the ability to see things differently. I mean, you know, your example, circular economy. Uh, yeah. How how do we, you know, look at look at something from a different perspective? Uh, how do we, you know, change? Uh, the way we approach, uh, you know, not from linear but circular, for example. So, innovation is key. Uh, clearly, having the ability to uh, design new business models. So it's not just uh, tec technical innovation. It's it's really innovation full range. Uh, also, what what is the what is the new business model? This is for us one of the key issues when we're talking about smart city initiatives. What is the business model? So, uh, so that's that's another another type of uh, you know skill that uh, that that is required. Uh, I would say also having the ability, even more than before, to work uh, collaboratively in teams. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's really uh, about ecosystems. So, how do you partner with uh, with others, other departments, but also other companies, and. Uh, and for I'd like to come back to our experience. Uh, as I said, we started from technology, and we because uh, there's there's lots of engineers in Veolia, and so we tend to think sometimes that technology can uh, change the world. But uh, if I come back to the example of Lyon that I mentioned, uh, we realized that we had put in place a, a great solution, lots of sensors, big screens, and systems that analyze all this data but that it didn't have s such a big impact on, uh, on the way we, we provided our services. Because what was really missing and what's key for any project is not so much technology, it's, it's the change management. 
side of it. How do you use that, that, you know, that change uh, to really impact your, your activities? So another skill we're, we're really focusing on now is uh, people with the, with the ability to, to transform, uh, to catalyze change, to, to bring this, uh, you know, this change management uh, to, to, to our organization or to any organization. So I would say these are you know, some, of the, uh, some of the skills, and still well, as I said, very much technology driven. I'm an engineer by training. So uh, I would say everyone should have at least some technological uh, background. You know, uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, these are you know buzzwords, but these are also topics that are going to impact all businesses, all activities. So, all of you should have some understanding of what it means, what it's about. Uh, not necessarily to be able to you know be a, a scientist or data scientist. This is a, a skill where we're also uh, uh, of course looking for you know people uh, with data analysis skills, but. So not necessarily required from all of you, but at least to have the, the knowledge, the understanding of some of these technologies that, that are going to, to drive changes. So, thank you. So I understand that we have much work at HEC to develop all these skills. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Olivia, um, you want to add a few points? Yes, uh, what is really important for us, it's, it's hard to add something because it's really true what you said, uh, we try now to build in a digital way our buildings before to make them real. Uh, and this is not so easy. It means that all the partners have to work on the same uh, lo logiciel, maquette, numerical maquette, uh, models, yes. And um, this is a, a real challenge for, for us to, to become full beam, what we call full beam, it like f that we build all of our buildings residential office in a digital way, sharing the information with other partners and adding to this information uh, something on carbon, something on circular economy, uh, and that everybody understand those data, can analyze them. Uh, this is a real challenge. Uh, the second thing is like when we, when we respond to a town and when we want to win against uh, someone else, uh, we we are changing our habits of uh, making a, a response to to the mayor, uh, and we we <laughs> use intelligent collective intelligence. We use uh, design thinking. We go we go in the town. We ask people what are their habits, and uh, we begin with them. And this is a bit new, I think. Uh, and uh, we also you, we even uh, think about uh, inviting some artists or people that think really differently to nourish uh, our way of thinking because the town is complex and we really have to have different competencies around the table. This is not so easy to organize. Uh, in Bouygues Immobilier, there are some specialists of it that, uh, that gather people and make them work together in a different way and using all their senses. So this is new competence too, I think. That's two more. I, I want to say all the above. Um, thanks for <laughs> all this richness. You know, in PNG, just a couple of things. We um, smart city is not a program. Like we don't have a smart city program. We don't have a home of the future program. Brands lead the show. Just like Asha Aish Pampers leads the Pampers recycling and the diapers recycling. We're doing that for the diapers industry, not just for our brand. Any diaper will actually go into this process. <laughs> Um, Ariel is doing is doing the change on on the laundry, so it's really it's embedded in. There's no special smart job. Um, it's actually going to be embedded in. Uh, so that's that's actu actually point number one. Brands lead the show. Brands lead. Uh, brands have a voice, um, and we want to make sure that they bring the voice of the future. Um, I'd say entrepreneur. It's uh, something that I would resonate most particularly. Taking risks. I mean, I said you know. Pampers recycling. I mean, we should. I mean, you, when you think back, and, and I, 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 I will, I will, I'm, I'm going to escape lots of details. But it's like wha how crazy we've been to even think about that, because it's full of risks. It's full of enough, you know, no man's lands understanding. And and now we're into municipalities. Never ever we had a job, PSPNG with municipalities. Now we're into this world, 
and we're gonna stay in this world because as I said earlier, as you change the models, you're into a totally different ecosystem. So I think, I think you know this world, I'm actually new into this world, but I know that's the new world. And so we, you know, it's entrepreneur taking risks, um, you know, business sense in terms of the win-win-win. Um, we, we have to, to make things that are at the end of the day irresistible to the consumer and how in the value chain, where is, uh, where is it where we're gonna build value so that everybody wants to be at the table and, and, uh, and, and actually really crack recycling diapers. Because if there's no business value, nobody will actually be interested. Believe it or not, might be the, one of the most uh, you know, amazing things to do on this planet to actually make this net positive, uh, literally. Um, but if you don't create a value chain that is accretive for partners, this stops. So highly, high business sense, high creativity, um, and, the, and the last thing I would say is, <laughs> and you, you just to re-impress the point you made, is partnership. We are, you know, we have a, a very various partners. I mean, we, use, we used to work with chemical companies and brand agencies and marketing and, and consumer analytics, and that was our world. Now we're into public, uh, private, municipalities, NGOs, and, and still with, with the same ex-partners. So it's not like we've, de some of you said that, you deleted what you had before and you, you acquired new things. No, it's, it's that plus that. And now you're into the world of closing loops, circular economy, totally different world, and especially to a gamut of different partners. So entrepreneurship, taking risks, um, high business sense, um, gr you know, and, and three, um, that, that deep ability and agility to, uh, to work with different partners. Um, and all of that, of course, with a, with a grounding point, which is called consumer resistibility. So absolutely be consumer obsessed um, to start with. So I think you said uh, the most essential things. I'm just uh, before leaving the, the floor to, to, to the participants for a Q&A session, uh, just say that uh, what uh, strikes me is the, the necessity to, um, yes, to have uh, so many different skills. Uh, although you may have different consultants in the same uh, uh, firm uh, with different skills. I think, yes, uh, what you expect from uh, maybe future HCCs is to have a, a sort of systemic approach, understanding uh, uh, environmental stakes and uh, business also uh, dynamics and uh, uh, technologies, what you said, uh, and the human element. And, um, and the human element meaning uh, the capacity to work with very different stakeholders to listen uh, to the to the consumers, uh, f uh, uh, to the clients, and to to involve, I think yes, to involve citizens, mobilize citizens also. Um, it's what what you work on uh, probably in at Plan Commune is uh, you know uh, how to mobilize uh, citizens in order to make uh, them uh, particip uh, participate to, to the, the new dynamics um, and the smart city dynamics probably also. Yeah. So um, now it's time to, to, to leave uh, you the floor for questions. And after we have a, a small um, tea or what? <laughs> yes, uh, can, yes. So if you can introduce yourself, please, and uh, explain us to whom you asked the question. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much. My name is Coralie Harmash. I'm an MBA student here, first year. And um, so thank you to both Viola and Greenflex for your comments. I was curious, you guys both described the aspect of smart meters, um, whether it be for water. In the United States, where I'm from, um, in Boston, there was an experiment with smart meters as well. Um, and so you have a lot of energy companies talking about consumer-centric sorts of products now. Um, the prosumer, who's now looking to be the center of all, uh, or producing, producing energy as well. So you have a very different uh, focus for the, for the utility company. However, what we found that was interesting in Boston was that even though you're putting in these smart meters, you have a very limited 
ex it's not a linear impact that you have on consumption or usage, and that you, you found at the end that it was basically the MIT students which were extremely interested in like how everything was reacting together, but that the remaining portion of the population had kind of just put the smart meters in the, in the drawer and, con and proceeded on life as usual. So I'm wondering, in your projects, how um, do you ever have the chance to do an impact analysis? And if so, uh, what's, or could you just tell me about kind of the struggles that you have with smart meters and uh, where you are in your projects with those? What sort of impacts you've seen? So it's a question for Pierre. For both, for either. I'm not sure who is. I can, I can start. Uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, we, we, well, we have experience with smart meters. Initially, we, we decided to deploy smart meters from the, you know, the operator's point of view, thinking, okay, it's going to drive efficiency. Uh, you know, less people running around to, uh, to read meters, uh, uh, better management of, uh, of, of the meters and uh, of, uh, of what is actually consumed. So, uh, you know, uh, looking at it from the operator's point of view. Then we, we went into, okay, what impact does it have on, on consumers? Is it going to reduce their consumption? Or is it going to facilitate their life? You know, we don't have to knock at that door to read their meters. We don't, uh, you know, we can, uh, in case of water meters, if there's a leakage in their property, they, we can uh, send an alarm, uh, warn them, or if there's their consumption is, is uh, suddenly uh, uh, going high, we can, we can also warn them. So, yes, it's, it's making it easy for, easier for consumer. We've seen that. However, I agree with your point. Is it helping to decrease consumption? Not so easy. And we've had, uh, and so we've had some specific experience uh, with the, you know, social uh, buildings um, where we we really wanted to monitor if that could help uh, people living in in these social buildings to reduce their consumption because it's it's all the more important for them. And what we found that. Again, just putting the technology was not enough. Didn't drive so much uh, reduction, reduction in consumption. So what we did was we partnered with uh, associations and that, uh, that uh, also conducted some coaching. So it was the combination of technology plus coaching, you know, knocking at the door saying, okay, this is, this is how it works, this is how you could use it, this is what you should look, you should look at. Only through this combination of, of human interaction uh, did we see some impact. Otherwise, I agree, it's more difficult to get. There's plenty of apps that are created to help you monitor and, and, and reduce your consumption. It does help, but uh, only to some extent. Thank you for your question. I totally agree with you. We can see the same thing in France. I'm not going to talk 10 minutes about Linky. Don't worry. You can read the press. But uh, of course, Linky, um, which is installed by, by Enedis, which is the distribution system operator in France, is hugely controversial because for 10 years, we've been hearing that uh, just putting Linky would be uh, an electricity reduction, a reduction of between 5 or 15 percent, something like that. Well, it's false, of course. Uh, why is it false? It's false because uh, Linky, it's just a box. You can just pu uh, put a USB device and that's all. Um, uh, Enedis is not um, acting like a teacher, it's just acting like someone installing something to, uh, to eventually uh, make its own life easier, but it's not really thinking about the consumer. Uh, it should have provided uh, the customers with examples, with things to look at when you look at your electricity load. Um, something not so funny is that for all the Linky installed in France, and you already have a few million uh, Linky installed in France, 
only a few percent of them have created an account online on the site to just see their 10 minutes load and precise load and to do something. Uh, and this is not doing enough to, to, to do that. So um, is it the DSO um, responsibility to do something? Is it the municipality responsibility to do something, another company? Is it the provider which uses the, um, the data of the distribution system operator uh, to do something? Probably uh, you have to invent some uh, very simple ways to read the information, to understand it, to 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 say, well, this Sunday I consumed uh, ten times what I consumed uh, the Sunday before. You cannot do that right now, and it's um, and it's not really normal. So you have to to have that, and I'm also thinking maybe adding some generation information. If everyone had a bit of renewable, for example, on the balcony, on the roof, uh, and you can compare your consumption and uh, what you actually generate uh, with electricity, well, you could get some more people interested with that because I would be really happy to see my precise consumption every day. Some of you would be, but the whole majority of the population, it's totally useless, you're talking about cents or a few euros. Um, so you need to invent some new ways to, to, to mobilize the, the consumers, it's important. Uh. Hi, uh, my name's David McCord, I'm in the strategy major here at HEC. Uh, I'm actually writing my thesis on smart cities, uh, so so grateful you could be here. Um, and my question is that uh, one of the main uh, breaks uh, I've come across in the literature uh, for smart city initiatives is that uh, you see that these projects are each time so unique uh, and so dependent on the location and different partnerships that uh, Oftentimes, companies will fail to uh, create scalable uh, models. So I don't know if this is a, a problem you've been confronted to, and, and if so, how you've addressed it uh, in your companies and projects. Thank you. It is a major problem for us because we serve the world, five billion consumers around the world, and we're not gonna do one city at a time. It's impossible, like it's not a job we can take. W I found, um, at least, and uh, I don't know whether it's your experience, but in my pioneer experience of working in this space, um, a scaling consortium called C40. Um, this is the consortium of the 97. In fact, it started at 40 biggest megalopolis of the world. Um, and it's, they decided just to share and reapply innovation, just to your point, is like how do we learn from each other versus reinventing in each cities what you know what others have actually already invented, and how do we find points of scalability? And so that's why they call C40. Now they are 97, so they are actually growing. And uh, what we really are trying to do, I mean, I find that work pretty fascinating. I have to say, I'm still a kid in the block here, so you know, you, you guys might know much better than I, but I, I know I'm working after them because uh, they've been profiling the cities in buckets, like four buckets. And, and, and as they profile the cities, now they can, you know, in each profile group, they can actually create scalability. Um, and so that's a consortium that mayors of, of these 97 cities are working with and through. And, uh, and so if you Google them, um, they are, you know, if you just Google C40, you'll see what they do. They produce an amazing report called Deadline 2020, where they basically are not only profiling those cities, but also glide pathing the ways of the 97 cities to the 1.5 degrees Celsius um, and 2 degrees Celsius scenarios and, and, and then, you know, roadmap what needs to happen where. So, you know, this is a major <laughs> uh, need for us to find points of scalability so we will not, as I said, go uh, recycling diapers one city at a time over the planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same comment. I mean, uh, we have to balance the fact that uh, I think all of us mentioned each uh, city is unique, has its own needs, and, uh, and therefore we have to be specific, but we want to, 
to, to have scalable solutions. We, we also run the world and we don't want to reinvent the wheel every time we, we come across a new, a, a new city with new issues. So there's parts that are common and there's you know, technological bricks, I would say, or modules. We, would, we try to you know, design our approach in, in kind of modules. So depending on the, on the city issues, we can you know, leverage a few, a few of these bricks or modules. Uh, with the fact that uh, there's going to be some specific uh, every time, but uh, um, I guess it would work for you as well. But you look at uh, energy efficiency in buildings. Okay, there's solutions that that are going to work pretty much everywhere around the world. Uh, so you see, there's there's some some elements that um, that that are scalable. Just something else. Uh, uh, we find solution with startups sometimes uh, for a different problem, and that's also a problem because the startup she can give solution uh, at a tiny scale sometimes, and uh, you have to make the startup grow and grow to 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 deliver the same solution in other towns and things like this. So the partnership with startup on on this on this is also key. How we make them grow. Uh, and make the, uh, their innovation grow and to to scale. Uh, to scale. Thank you. The next question. Uh, hello, my hello. name is Laure. I'm uh, MSc student in sustainability, and so the presentation that we've had uh, today was about the issues um, of how to tackle carbon uh, footprint through the city. Um, and the solution that you have all brought up is new technologies and how that it can uh, reduce the footprint. But I think what we forget often is in the cities, uh, what is most important is people who actually live in it. And you've started touching on it, what people live, how, how we impact uh, people who live in it is by encouraging to change their behavior. And this is something that has been very briefly touched upon uh, in, your, in the solutions that you offer. So I guess it's a question I ask to all of you. Um, you know, what is the role of, of companies in helping to change people's behavior to reduce our carbon footprint? But I guess more specifically to PNG, because you're the closest to the consumers, you present the circular economy as the new solution, but isn't there something about changing the way we consume all of your products and offering products that are much, uh, much more smart in 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 the carbon footprint. Thank you. So you want me to answer? <laughs> this is um, negative carbon if we make it happen. So I think there's two things. I think there's one which is around education about how we're going to help the consumer understand the impact and reduce the impact. And one is really about innovation. And I think we need to move on the two pathway because, and that's why I'm, I'm very obsessed about making sustainable irresistible. We've spent years educating the consumer on washing and colder temperature. And frankly, it's very tedious. It's been a lot of marketing spending money for little progress. We've been the, f the first with Ariel to actually talk about turn to 30 um, and and after 10 years, you know, the impact we're making when we, you know, about the 10 to, 10 to 30 is, is pretty marginal impact. What works best for us is come up with innovations that literally work best in the best conditions that the consumer wants. So we learned the hard way that trying to convince the consumer to wash uh, in cold temperature was hopeless. They were not interested. Nobody, no consumer in the world, and tell me if, if you're different, wakes up in the night and says, I just dream somebody is going to make me be able to wash in cold temperature. I just, I just can't wait for that day when it happens. Nobody. You do? Yeah, on top of that. On top of that.
Sure. So you, what you're saying is just make one button and it's that's it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's I'm not I'm not the appliance manufacturer, but 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 we this is one of the things we we, we you know we we are working as an industry. So we're not making appliances. So we don't have that power. But I can tell you what we hear uh, the consumers want um, is quick. And um, the nice thing about quick is when you actually wash quick, you don't have time to heat up the temperature to 